Hello, I'm here to review Book of Hours in 5 minutes or less. Fair warning, I did receive a free key for review purposes. Also, don't mind what is happening on screen, I would find Book of Hours to be very difficult to explain, so honestly, unless you spend some time in game yourself, it is all just pretty moving pictures. Book of Hours is a fairly addictive puzzle game that gives you practically no information and that you figure out as you go along. Let's start from the pros. Unlike the developer's previous game called Cultist Simulator, Book of Hours has no time pressure. The days and seasons come and go, but you have infinite time to observe them coming and going. Progress in the game is achieved through discovering things, reading books, unlocking new chambers in your house. No matter what activity you choose to do on the day, all activities being fairly small and easy to achieve a singular step in, means that Book of Hours ends up with an addictive gameplay loop where it is easy to tell yourself I will only read one more book or I will only unlock one more room. The game does a lot of highlighting for you. If you're looking for a material, click on any material and hover over the bit on screen that says material and you will see all of materials in your house begin to flash. There's a sort button for different parts of your inventory, not to mention the inventory can be pulled out and shrunk as you like. Loads of game hours in one playthrough. So far I've only unlocked the ability to have a minor ending and I'm 33 hours in. If I want a super duper awesome ending, then there's more gameplay hours remaining. Let's move on to the cons. The game is least confusing if you approach it already knowing Cultist Simulator lore. There's very little hand-holding and you'll find out what the world is from reading the tidbits on the books that you've read, but if this is your first game from the developer it will be a hundred times more confusing than if you came in already knowing the lore. On your first playthrough, the way that you'll figure out what you're doing is by clicking around. Seriously, it took me like three hours to even figure out how to properly read books. However, you can level in the skill tree and use up items in a way that it will make it very hard for you to progress at all. In other words, you can screw up the rest of your gameplay for yourself by simply exploring and trying to figure out how to play the game to begin with. This is really a minor object managing simulator. Despite trying my best to group drinks in the kitchen, food in the pantry, and books based on their color, level, and if they were red or not, and similar, the thing that I catch myself doing a lot is flying all over the screen thinking, I remember I had that six moth drink somewhere. Unless you have a mega brain and are prepared to try hundreds of combinations and remember what does what and where, you will likely use Google a lot, especially when it comes to figuring out all the crafting recipes, for example. I actually managed to collect more lessons and languages than I have space on the screen. Currently the last line of them is half hidden. A school wheel for this section would be much appreciated. Overall, I gotta say that there's something very hypnotic about this game and for me this is the most entertaining game key that I ever received for review purposes. 10 out of 10 would lose 11 hours staring at the screen thinking one more thing and then being very dazed and confused once I leave my computer screen all over again. Seriously, this has somehow ticked all the boxes for what makes games engaging and even when I'm done with my playthrough I'm likely to come back for another one. So the game is very... well... It is flawed, but <laughs> somehow it is actually fun. So if you feel that this might be a, your cup of tea, I do suggest trying it. 